Robin Lord Taylor. We have love song. Woo! Oh, awesome. Go ahead. Woo! <laughs> there we go. Is it on? Hola, Puerto Rico. Let's see. Uh, how are you doing, guys? Thank you for coming. This is amazing. I, I've been telling everybody in the yeah. line that up until this weekend, I had only been through the airport, <laughs> I, and which is totally embarrassing because it's just blown my mind. This, it, you guys live in paradise. You're so lucky, and I can't wait to come back. So it's just been, it's been incredible. I love you guys so much. And also, like the nicest people in the world, like the kind. Everyone has been so kind. It's just yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank for you, man. Puerto Rico. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Is this your first first time in Puerto Rico? It's yeah. I mean, again, first like time. when I was with uh, with my family growing yeah. up, we would go to the Caribbean a lot. Okay. And you know, when you're flying from the Midwest, yeah. you, you fly to San Juan and then you go <laughs> off. Yeah. And so again, like it was just. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> it was just uh, the airport, but but now, yeah, it's it's incredible. And again, like yeah. it's such a short weekend, really. And so, like, I'm gonna come back, bring friends, bring family. Yeah. Awesome. I, I, I've been telling everybody, I'm like, we're never going to Florida again. Like, <laughs> we're going to Puerto Rico. This is where it's oh, at. Right. That's right. Oh. That's right. Awesome. <laughs> so, I want to ask you a little bit about your career. I was looking through it. I look. You've been working at Law and Order so many times. Yes. I love Law and Order. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I know. I, I did. Um, I did. I played three different characters over the years on the original Law and Order, and then one character on SVU. And you know they do the marathons. Yeah. You know on the weekend USA. or whatever. And I'll get. I'll look on like Twitter or whatever, <laughs> and I'll, I'll I'll come up more than once in one day yeah. playing like different people, which is so funny. Yeah, and also, well, also working with The Walking Dead. Yes. Yeah. How was it working with The Walking Dead? Walking Dead was really, uh, it was a life-changing experience. It was, it was, you know, it was a very small role. Yeah. But, um, but you know, it was, you know, really my, my biggest television thing up until that point. Especially, and then my first real experience with um, any sort of comic book property. You know, it was like my first time you know, being exposed to fans like you guys, you know, and, and you know, before that, I mean, Law & Order yeah. has some pretty yeah, intense Lord fans, Order. too. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, this was like the first time being in the comic book world. And then again, like, I really think it set the stage for Gotham for me, yeah. because I, I, did, I did Walking Dead, and I didn't know about Gotham. And then I, I had the most amazing experience there. And then I, and then months later, I got my audition for Gotham. And then I think I really do feel like my experience with Walking Dead really just propelled me towards Gotham. And I have to say, like I'm not, I'm not lying at all. This is the complete, honest truth. The cast of The Walking Dead are some of the nicest people I've ever worked with or really met in the world. And I remember going there. And you know, when you're a guest star and you're going on to a show like like Walking Dead, and these yeah. people, and it was season four, was my first episode. You know, they had been working together for four years. They all knew each other. It's very much like a family. You know, you're always a little nervous stepping in. Like, like you know, it's like going to a new school, you know, like, yeah. for like a couple days, and it's like, oh, are they gonna like me? Is it, What's the vibe gonna be like? I mean, I got to work on my first day with Melissa McBride wow. and Andrew Lincoln and my good friend, Brina Palencia. And I, uh, they could not have been kinder. And I knew from the second I showed up, Andrew and Melissa embraced us like we had been there since the beginning. And I remember thinking to myself, I was like, oh, like if I ever get to be in a position like theirs, where I'm a series regular on a show, I, 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 I promise that I will treat every person who comes through that show with the same kindness that, that was shown to me on this show. Because it's like, when you do a show like Walking Dead or a show like Gotham, these are very intense, dramatic, violent, you know, it's very dark shows. The only way you can get through it as an actor is if there's love behind the scenes. And, and so, yeah, I, I carried that through to Gotham and, you know, we made sure that everyone who came through Gotham was a member of the family as well. So, yeah. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Bueno, si quieren comenzar para la, la fila para hacer las preguntas, si desean comenzar, se pueden ya comenzar a hacer la frita aquí en el medio, aquí con el hombre de la camisa roja. Yeah, yeah. Before that, what, where's hotter, Puerto Rico o Atlanta? 
<laughs> or human. Oh, what's more human? Yeah. Well, you know, I, again, I haven't been here very long. <laughs> You know, <laughs> Atlanta is pretty. I mean, yeah. that was that was really hot, and we were we shot in the summer. You know, in you know, like you know, like in Atlanta, it was it was pretty crazy. And then it's also like, you know, when you're on a show, you 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 know, you want to especially like Walking Dead, you want to yeah. look realistic, like you're really feeling it. But I was looking a little too <laughs> realistic. I was like sweating, wa you know, just all over the place. Yeah, like, they make it look real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, they didn't need any. I didn't need any help with that. Like they, I, I handled that on my own. <laughs> and about Gotham, I wanted to ask you, the your character of Penguin has been portrayed so many times over the the '60s TV shows, and then with Danny DeVito, and then all of a sudden what kind of disappeared? And then you brought it up. You give it your own personality. How was constructing that character for the screen? It was really. It, it was. It, it, it was remarkably easy in a way because like. You know, uh, when when we were auditioning for the show, they didn't tell us what the show was. They didn't tell us what it was about. They didn't tell us what characters we were playing or we were auditioning for. And so they wrote fake scenes okay. for us to do that that the characters that we were doing in the audition scenes had the same personalities as the characters we would end up ultimately playing on the show. But we didn't know any of that. So we went in. You know, I was given a scene, and I was like, okay. I was like, this is this is how I'm gonna do it. You know, and it was just a very like, those were my my choices on how I was gonna play that scene, and remarkably, it matched up perfectly with what the executive producers had in mind. And it, it you know, it was a really brilliant plan or idea of theirs to do it that way, because when you do something like this, you Batman has to be reinterpreted for every new generation. You know, it's been around for 80 years, and for it to keep going, it has to, again, it has to be changed. It has to, you know, it has to live and develop and, and grow the way we are all growing in our lives. And so, you know, by us going in with just our intuitive ideas on who these characters mm -hmm. were, we weren't going in trying to recreate, Not and I couldn't, not that I could, there's no way I could, you know, even touch what Danny DeVito did. So I, you know, so I went in, you know, doing my own thing, just not knowing what, that it was the right thing. So I don't know, I feel like I was, you know, I was blessed. It was a blessed moment. All right, so let's go ahead and open the microphones. Yep. All right, how are you? My name is uh, Javier. I have a question regarding uh, Gotham. Yeah, great, thanks. Awesome show. Uh, had there been an additional season, uh, what was, would have been your vision, or maybe as Penguin, uh, as far as how that season would have gone, maybe your first interaction with the, either Bruce Wayne or with Batman. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I like what you said because I think like, you know, if we had more time, I would have liked to explore more of a, of a connection between Bruce Wayne and Oswald, you know, because again, the, you know, as it comes down the line, as we all know, they're arch enemies. And so like, yeah, I think, I think it would have been cool to really like sort of explore, you know, what happened, what could have happened in the past. Um, and, you know, just to see like if, if anything that Penguin, who he was or what he did would have any sort of effect on who Bruce Wayne would grow up to be, I think that would have been really cool. And, and also just to expound on that, I, I, I can't really say specifically what I would want to do in, in, if there were a sixth season, except just more opportunities to interact with the characters that I didn't get as much time with, you know, like just to, to really explore. You know, there are so many people that, you know, I worked with, but I didn't have a lot of scenes with. And, you know, I the cast of Gotham are, are some of the most incredible actors I've ever worked with in my life. and and. I was inspired by what they brought, and I just wish, you know, with certain people like, like Lucius Fox, and like played by the amazing Chris Chalk, like just more like kind of that interaction, I think would have been cool. But say la vie. All right, awesome, thank you. Thanks, man. Hi, I'm Alexandra. Hi. Um, I got a question regarding John Wick Three. Um, how long it took to put all those tattoos and piercings on you? Congrats, by the way. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, I have the tiniest role in John Wick Three, but again. Like, if they had me just, like, in the background, I would have gone in and just, like, <laughs> moved the lights around. Like, I don't care. Like, I just, like, to, to work with those people, and especially on that story, I was a fan of that movie when it came yeah. out, and, and, of course, of the sequel, and then, you know, it just incredible but yeah and i play this guy who has a lot of piercings <laughs> tattoos which is really neat because like you know i i don't have any and so like you know it took about 
I would say like an hour and a half to get them all on. And then once they were all on, I was kind of like, I kind of like this. <laughs> and I was like, but maybe not the best idea for the rest of my life. But it was, I was really kind of getting into it. But yeah, it was. What's that? Ah, oh, thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was a really amazing experience. Thank you. Thank you. What's up, friend? Hello, <laughs> my name is Winston, and I just wanted to know, uh, it's uh, a question about Gotham. Okay, cool. Uh, what was your favorite episode to act in? My favorite episode of Gotham, oh, that was a tough one, oh man. <laughs> There's a lot of my favorite episodes. I mean, I think, um, I mean, I'll just list a couple that come to mind. Uh, obviously, the first episode, like that, you know, just really, I think, was just such an incredible pilot episode. It was an incredible way to start our series. And it was also, you know, you're a little bit younger than I am, but as you'll see when you grow up, you know, you'll see that um, we, we will have, like, we all have moments in our lives where you can feel that your life just changed, where you just sort of feel that something fundamental just sort of shifted, whether it's meeting someone who ends up being a, a great love or a great friend, or, you know, we, you know, I'm sure all of you can, can think of a moment where, you know, where something happened that your life changed. When I was on the pier with Jim Gordon in that first episode, it, you know, it was, it was snowing, it was like, you know, as cold as, as you can imagine, but it's almost like I was outside of myself looking down and being like, this is what you were always destined to do. You know, and it was, it was like, it was, it, I, and, I, and I was like, and also, your life will never be the same after this. And it was a really big, scary, but amazing moment. So, so yes, the first episode, but then I'll have to say, you know, and then the last episode, you know, like that was when we could jump, I, I won't spoil too much, because I know there are some people who probably haven't seen it. <laughs> But I'm sure you all know that we jumped 10 years into the future. And so I was able to, you know, like, Penguin gained a little bit of weight in that episode. And I, I was able to, like, and I had the monocle and the top hat and all of the costume pieces that we all associate with, with the Penguin. I got to have them all, finally, at the end. And it just felt, it, it just was amazing because it, it, it felt like, we were finally given the legitimacy that we earned, you know, and and yeah. So uh, the first and the last are, are my favorites. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks, little man. Hi there, Osway. Hey, man. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Um, I just want to uh, have a question and a small request. Uh, my question is, after John Wick 3, do you know what's your next step or what's going to be your next role? And I wanted to know my small request, if you can do like a small reenactment of the Penguin. <laughs> of, of the Penguin walk? Yes. Or, or? Um, like a, a line or something <laughs> that you can say. I'm the King of Gotham! <laughs> That's all I'll do with that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and then my next thing, I, I am shooting, I have a, a, a supporting role on uh, the second season of a series called You, Y-O-U, as yeah. in you, yeah. um, and it's on Netflix now, and uh, yeah, it's, it, it's awesome. I, I work with, I have, I have a lot of scenes with, uh, with Penn Badgley, who's just an amazing guy and just an amazing scene partner, and also, the greatest thing about it is that I'm playing someone who is blonde, which is, <laughs> don't have to dye my hair anymore, it's great, and then I, but also this character, he's just a very, he's a kind, gentle person, which, as we all know, is light years different from, from Oswald, but, you know, that's part of the thing that we as actors, we want to do, we want to do, I want to play everyone I can, I want to change for you, I want to, I want to, like, step into someone else's skin, I don't want to just be known as the, you know, the guy who played the penguin once, you know, it's a, it's all about like changing it up and, and subverting people's expectations, you know, or how they, they think that you should be, you know, and so, so yeah, it's really cool. I think it comes out in the fall, so yeah, check it out. All right, thank you. Thanks, man. Hi again, Robin. My name hey, is Reed from Cultura Sequencial. Um, just one question. How you define 
your the arc that Oswald went through going from Oswald from the Obella guy to being the king of Gotham um, penguin for you as an actor how was that like uh, that was it was like it, you know it really felt like I experienced someone else's life in a weird way because you know we shot nine months for five years you know and that's a lot of time spending with this character and, and as obviously like I had never played a character for that long so you know like weirdly like there were there were times where like his experiences really kind of mirrored what I was going through like for example like I, I, I think about um, you know where Oswald starts like he has he has no status you know everyone he's completely like no, he, no one expects anything from him. They, you know, they don't think of him at all. And you know, but but he he has one thing that no one else had, and that was the strongest ambition a human being could possibly have. And I identify with that. Like, you know, that's one of the few things that I identify with Oswald. Well, don't worry. But like, but really, like his ambition and his refusal to believe the people who were telling them that him that he was nothing. You know, like, like just like the fact that he could dream as big as he could dream. You know, it was just like, I, I really, it, it felt like he and I were on the same path in that way. And at the end of season one where I'm yelling, I'm the king of Gotham, I was on the roof of a building in Brooklyn. And I was like, I was looking at the Empire State Building. And at that point, I had lived in New York for 15 years trying to make it as an actor. And, you know, I could get emotional talking about it, but like when I'm up there and I'm like looking at the Empire State Building and I'm yelling, I'm the king of Gotham, I was the king of New York City in that moment. No one could tell me any different. Like that was exactly what I was feeling. And yeah, it just, um, yeah. So, you know, in weird ways, it's like our lives would, would parallel and, you know, and, and, and a weird thing happens too because, you know, the writers create the character. They, they're the ones who decide, you know, what the vision is and what the words are gonna be. But then as the actors spend a lot of time with the, with the character, the writers start to write for me. Like they start to write in my voice. So the weird, so it was like, in a weird way, it was the most difficult job, but at the same time, the easiest job because I could just like turn it on like that. You know, I knew exactly, how I was gonna say every line, I knew exactly where he was coming from, and yeah, it just felt like a very organic, like, I just felt very, like, connected to this character in a way I've never felt before on any other job I've ever had, so, yeah, it was, it was really, really profound. Awesome, please again. Thank you, buddy. Hey, man, how are you? Hey, I'm um, good, man. Thank you for showing us an awesome penguin, a totally different, and I, I really enjoyed the show, really. And, Thank and the you, last Thanks for watching. Was awesome for me. Uh, by the way, I have a, a question about your relationship with the, the Riddler, okay? With, with what? With the Riddler. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Edward Nedman. So we know that you kind of fell in love with the, with the Riddler. Um, I, would like to, I would like to know if after the 10, ten years uh, jump, how is the relationship? The Penguin is still in love with Edward Nedman or is more like a friendship? You know, I think uh, after... Well, first of all, I have to say that, you know, it's hard to say that he fell in love because Oswald is an emotionally damaged person who doesn't understand boundaries and also really having never really had a true friend or any sort of someone or really anyone who really like connected with him. You know, his idea of love is very different, I think, from what, you know, you and I and the rest of us here would think. Like, he, he just, you know, he doesn't, I don't, I don't think he truly, like, it's not like love in the truest sense. It's more just sort of like, you know, I, I don't want to put a word on it, but, you know, it's a, it's a complicated kind of thing. And so after they, you know, that's, that happened and then they, they both have a complete falling out, I think Oswald, Oswald, I don't think, Oswald had a realization. He learned that what he was feeling wasn't necessarily love. It was more about possession, more about, you know, security. You know, it, it wasn't a true love connection in that you're allowing another person to have their wants and their desires and their feelings. It's more like, you know, I want, it's, it's like he wanted to possess, possess Ed Nigma in that way. And so, you know, when they fell out, I think Oswald learned that lesson. Like, like when they, and they, they came around and they reconnected and he realized that like, you know, yes, like, 
I, I always say it's like my enemy is my best friend. You know, like they, there's a connection there and there's this beautiful dance that Oswald and Ed are doing throughout the rest of the season all the way up until the very last episode where it's like you can't totally tell, like they're both opportunists and they're both gonna, you know, they both wanna be the king. And so, you know, there's always gonna be tension there, but they also both realize that, you know, together they are absolutely unstoppable. You know, and so there's there's so there there's a reason that they there is a friendship there, and so yeah, I'll also say um, I don't for those who have seen it, others have not. The uh, second to the last episode, episode eleven of of season five, is there's one of my favorite scenes ever between Ed and Oswald, and I think it's like the most beautiful encapsulation of what their relationship is, and um, so yeah, I, I encourage everybody to watch that scene and and. And that's the resolution between the two of them. That's what that's what the the real uh, the real truth of their relationship, I think, is in that scene. So yeah, I can't wait for those who haven't seen it. I can't wait for you to check it out. Thank you, man. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So my question is Gotham related. Great. If you could play another character besides Cobblepot, who would it be and why? Oh man, we you know okay. Thank you for asking that question. We we we've gotten this question a lot through the years, and I have the most disappointing answer for you is that again with what I was saying about how the audition process went on the show, the fact that we didn't know what we were doing. We were just going in intuitively, you know, approaching these characters, you know, just from our own experiences and, and bringing those experiences to these characters. It would be impossible for me to imagine anyone else playing these characters, including myself. Like, it just was so perfectly, perfectly cast. I, I, and, you know, and, and people also ask, like, you know, going forward, would we ever do a spin-off or this or that? And I, I'll say, like, anything's possible, but it would have to be the same group of people. Because I, you know, there, it just, I couldn't imagine, like, having to share a scene with another Barbara or another Jim or another Ed Nigma. You know, it just, it, it, it just worked out perfectly. So, yeah, unfortunately... There's no one else I would rather play. I'm the king of Gotham, man. I mean, like, what? I'm not gonna play anybody else. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, though. Hi. Hi, you look amazing. Thank you. No problem. My question is, what is your favorite movie of, of, of all times and why? What's my favorite what? Movie. Movie of all time. Oh. And why? See, this is a good good note for everybody. So, you know, we all get, I'm sure like you'll be talking to someone and they'll be like, you know, what TV shows do you like? And you know, in the moment, it's almost impossible to think yeah. of like, it's always like, have I ever seen a movie before? I can't think of a single movie. So you get your notes app on your phone uh -huh. and you start your list right now. Like start thinking of your favorite movies and I promise you, it will save you a lot of time, but as long as you can find the right one. <laughs> okay, favorite movies. Give me one minute. Okay, oh man. Okay, it's probably not gonna be in. I'm not gonna find it. <sighs> okay, that was the worst advice I could have ever given anybody because it's totally turning around and biting me in the butt. Uh, let's see. Let's see. All right, so, uh, my favorite movie of all time, oh man, I would have to say, whew, you know, I love Stanley Kubrick. I think The Shining is one of those movies where every time it's on television, I can't tear myself, I've seen the movie at least 20 times. I can't tear myself away from it. It's like, you know, it's like looking at, you know, it's like looking at the most intricate picture and you, you, you see what it is, but the longer you stare at it, you start seeing new things. It's like the most amazing experience. And it's really hard for me to think about any sort of experience that I've had. I've never really had that experience with any other movie in the sense that I feel like every time I watch it, I find something new or I think about something differently or like the ending, <laughs> spoiler alert, <laughs> if you haven't seen The Shining. Get a life, <laughs> um, but but like at the end, you know, the end is so ambiguous and really beautifully poetic in a way. And I think like, you know, the older you get, you watch it and you 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 look at it differently, and it's almost like it means something different, you know, as you go through your life. So yeah, I'm gonna say the shining. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, love. Hi. 
Hi, my name is Sari, and I'm so excited Hi. that you're actually here because Oslo Cobblepot is my favorite character from the Gotham series. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Well, my question was, how did you prepare yourself before filming your character? Because I remember watching it, and Oswald is just this outrageous person. So I just wanted to ask you, how do you prepare it for Yeah, that? it's, well, you know, like, you know, there's this standard, like, you know, we, we, every, every time we would start an episode, we would have, we, we call it a table read, and it's literally everyone sits around a table and reads the script together. And so that's the first time you sort of see what we're going to be doing in that episode and what will be required of us emotionally and physically and all of that. And so, you know, that, you know, gets me in the mindset of where we're going to go, you know, with that particular episode. So that helps. And so, yeah, and then the night before, I, you know, forced my husband to, like, run lines with me. And, like, he's an actor, so it actually works out pretty good. Um, but, yeah, so we, like, you know, I, 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 you know, work on the lines and, like, you know, really try and get them memorized so that I don't have to, like, think about it or, or you know, like, I don't have to have that stress. And then on top of that, it's also, like, I, go, I would go into work and I would have an hour and a half to two hours of hair and makeup. And, you know, I had with the fake nose and the, you know, and the crazy disco vampire hair, <laughs> as Barbara so eloquently put it. Uh, and, you know, it's like using that time when the, when the nose goes on and the makeup goes on and then the hair is done. And then I step into these suits, these gorgeous suits that, I, you know, I would never personally wear in my life. But like, you know, but that Oswald would. And, you know, it's like that informs who the character is. And also, like, you know, if you wear a three-piece suit yeah. that's tailored to your body, your posture changes, you just, your whole attitude changes, you know, it's, it's like, you know, that's, you know, you're pre that's how you're presenting yourself. So it's like, yeah, so then putting on the costume and then the, on top of that, go walking onto whatever set we would be shooting on. We had the most amazing production team in Hollywood. The fact that we, they, they built these incredible sets that look like, you were stepping into the comic book. Like, it just really transforms, like, you know, your sense of where you are in the world. It's really remarkable. So, like, all of those things, especially those physical things coming together, it just sort of, like, got me right into the character as well. And then again, because so much of this character is, like, intuitively, like, like what I brought to it, you know, because, again, about the auditions and all of that, it just was so seamless. It, it, like I could just like access it so hard, and I never felt like I was like trying or like you know scrambling or like pushing. You know, it just it just felt really natural. So so yeah. And then and then the last thing are my incredible co-stars, the people that I got to share time with, that I got to share these amazing scenes with. I'm inspired by Corey Michael Smith. I'm inspired by. Ben McKenzie, by Aaron Richards, by everybody on the show. They, they make me want to be a better actor. They make me want to come with my A game. And you know, because I'm only trying to meet them on their level. So again, all of those things coming together, that's, that's how we got the Penguin on Gotham, yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs>
thank you to the people of Puerto Rico for being so beautiful and loving and kind. Like, it really makes a difference when we do these things because, again, like, I'm just here to, like, I connect with people and I want to be, I want to talk to people and I want to, I want to have, like, an emotional connection with people. And to have people just be so open-hearted, it, it, it makes the, the, a world of difference. So thank you all so much for that. It's just amazing. Okay, first of all, I just want to say also thank you for the penguin. You, honestly, like for real, you're one of the best uh, fictional interpretations, like fictional character interpretations I've seen. Thank you so, so much. Thank really, that you. first scene with the penguin, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> amazing. And you. second of all, I just want to ask you, I know maybe you've been asked this a lot, but a lot of actors have their interpretation, but yours, having so many years in the acting industry, what would be your first advice for new actors trying to start or trying to get to the industry? Oh man, to, well, it, there's a lot. There, there's a lot of advice you could, one could give. First of all, it's um, the the biggest advice I can give anyone trying to be an actor, and it, it may sound a little counterintuitive, but you know, because as actors, like I said before, like I want to change. I want to like you know, I want to. I want to change in front of you. I want to play different people. I, I don't want to be myself when I'm acting. However, if you're going to do that and you're going to do it well, you have no choice but to know yourself as well as you possibly can. Find out, like really do the work to find out what makes you who you are and what, and what inspires you and what drives you and what, because until you, unless you know yourself, you can't, you can't do justice to any character that you're ever gonna play. Like, you have to really know who you are. And then on top of that, there's another piece of advice for people starting out now, especially younger people. Get off your phone. Get off your phone. As an actor, you take your inspiration from the real world, from, 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 the, from real human connection and real human interaction. You, as, as real as social media might seem, it's not real. It's 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 as it's as fake as the nose on Penguin's face. You know, <laughs> it, you know it, it's not real life. And so, like, I really implore people to take time away from social media. D like, connect to the people, to your surroundings. Look up. Don't look down. Look up. That's where the real stuff is. That's the stuff that makes you who you are, and also will make you a better actor. So, that's my other piece of advice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Alberto. Nice Hi, to meet you. nice to meet you too. Okay, man. so I have two comments and just one question. Great. Uh, first comment: The Shining is one of the greatest movies ever made. Now, the <laughs> second thing it is that I do hope that they give you another space in John Wick because you're even well, even though it was small, it was a great scene. Awesome. That you really Thank you, man. Well. Now, the actual question is from Michelle, but she's too shy to actually ask it. Oh, Michelle, whatever. She is a huge fan from Gotham. She wants <laughs> to know you. what Thank is the you hardest. So much scene or episode that you ever, or that, the what, hardest scene or most challenging scene or episode that you had to What record. was the favorite or the hardest? The hardest. The hardest. Okay, this is going to get a little serious. Um, in, <laughs> now I can't remember the seasons, it's been a minute. Uh, in season two, we meet Penguin's father and, you know, played by the incredible Paul Rubens, aka, who's also known as playing Pee Wee Herman. And, and I, you know, I was a fan of Pee Wee Herman when I was a kid, and like, you know, it, when, when I was a kid, and I'm sure you, we're probably close to age in the sense that like, you know, when we were kids, it was like the Pope, <laughs> Michael Jackson, um, Pee Wee Herman, you know, it was like those were the most famous people, Madonna's in there somewhere, <laughs> but those are the most famous people we could imagine. And so then the fact that he's playing my dad was just absolutely incredible. And then also that he played Penguin's father in Batman Returns too, which is a really fun crossover that we got to have. Anyway, uh, as we know, uh, well, as I hope you know, I hope you've seen yeah. season two, so this is a spoiler if you haven't seen it, but uh, unfortunately Penguin's father dies. And this is another weird place where Oswald and my life totally coincided because while we were shooting, the day that we were shooting the scenes where my TV father is dying, my father died. And I was on set when that was happening, and I... Uh, it was another sort of out-of-body experience. Um, and it was also like, well, so anyway, 
you know, we were shooting, we were shooting the show, and I got the news, and so we took a break, and, you know, they asked what I wanted to do, and they, they, they left it up to me, like, if I wanted to leave, if I wanted to stay, they were like, what do you want to do? And so, it was, it was Paul's last day of the entire series, and, you know, and I, I you know, and I was thinking about it, and I wasn't going to be able to get home until the next day anyway, and... As an actor, when do you ever get that moment to, 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 to where you're, what you're going through personally is what your character is going through? It was this profound experience that I couldn't say no to. You know, like I, I had to know what that felt like. And so, so we finished the day. I finished those scenes, and there are a couple scenes. You know, if you go back and watch, I, I forget what episode it was, but if you go back and watch season two, there are a couple scenes where. Um, yeah, I, my dad had just died, and my father is dying in front of me. And uh, in a weird way, like, I think of it as like a tribute to my dad, in that like, I sort of feel like, you know, of course he's my dad, he'll always be with me, but like, now he weirdly lives on forever and ever. You know, like now, like, tangentially, like he's part of that world too. And I can't think of anything more beautiful, you know, and, and, and also like the reason I'm an actor is because I had the support of my mother and father. And so everything I do is because of him. The fact that I'm sitting in front of you is, well, obviously because of him, <laughs> <laughs> but, but is really because of his support and his love and his insistence that I don't settle, that I follow my heart and I do what I want and I do what I want with my life. You know, he was very much, you know, he was a man of a certain generation and he had to make sacrifices and he had to do things for his family that he, that weren't necessarily what he wanted to do with his life, but he did them because he had to. He made it so that I would never have to do that. And so again, I just think that, you know, the fact that there was this weird moment where, you know, <laughs> our, where, you know, like what was happening to me was happening to Oswald and, and my dad is part of this world too. I just think it's like, it's an amazing tribute to him. And, and again, it's like this connection that I have to this show, it's so much more than a job for me. It, 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 it was part of my life and part of my soul and part of my family. It, 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 it goes so much deeper than people think. And so that was the hardest episode, but also the episode I'm most proud of and also the episode that I will never watch. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, man. We got some Selena cosplay, I see. Yeah. yeah! Okay, hi. Hi. Sorry, I'm so nervous. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. just breathe. We're all friends. <laughs> I just wanted to know, like, what happened to Fish Mooney? What happened to Fish Mooney? You know, and that's the thing about Gotham, is like, you know, people die, but no one ever really dies in Gotham, <laughs> you know? And like, you know, that was amazing too, because we didn't really know at the end of season one if she would come back, you know, and, and, and I have to say, I, I have to give a huge shout out to Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah. Like, she is the consummate professional. Yes, please, please clap for her. She helped to launch our show, and she showed up with no attitude, no ego. She was in it with the rest of us. You know, it just, and, and she and I had so many intimate moments in the show, like just between the two of us. And so like when I was starting on Gotham, you know, we had to do interviews like this and like I didn't know what the heck I was doing and like, you know, and, and, and they would put me with her because she's done a billion of them. And she just like took me under her wing, showed me how this whole world goes, how to be a real person, but yet still like have a coherent thought and you know like get a sound bite out there. Um, so anyway, she's she's so amazing. The fact that we got to bring her back was was amazing, and um, and yeah, I guess she technically died in my arms, but in my head, Hugo Strange got you know he, he got he got his fingers around on that, and he, you know he he fixed it I think for sure. Like I think in my mind, I think she's still living somewhere with that crazy eye, <laughs> just waiting for her moment. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, I love so, you much. so much. Oh, I love you. Thank you. Hi. Hi again. Hi again. I'm Anna. I'm a little 
Sandra's mother. And the first time, I don't know everything, nothing, nothing about God. But my son is now in heaven, he passed. And I, be, I learned how to love you through them, through my son and through my daughter. And it's more significant to me, but it's a different love. It's a new, you are a new son to me. And I began, I am now your truth. I'm your mother, <laughs> your Puerto Rican mother. <laughs> yeah. Love you. Oh, I love you too. I got <laughs> 41 years old, thank you so much. I'm gonna feel that tomorrow. <laughs> Eight bruises, I'm gonna get stretched. Yeah. Well, thanks for everything. Thank you, man. That was an amazing experience. I hope everybody learned something. So that too, to man. achieve your dreams, you have to work for them. And you're a living proof that if you work at it, have a good sense of it, everything is possible. That's right. Man. So thank That's you so much, I appreciate oh, it. Thank you, man. And thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bless you guys. I love you, Puerto Rico.